Hey everybody and welcome back to some more oxygen not included. Last episode we were working on trying to automate and simultaneously cool our new polymer presses over here as well as get our new oil refinery up and running with the liquid reservoir here and then of course the natural gas pump which is taking all that natural gas over to our natural gas generator slowly but surely giving us that little bit of extra power. And speaking of power, the first thing that you might notice here at the start of today's episode is that we're starting to get overheat damage on our coal generators because they are now just over that 75 degree Celsius mark. At least this one is. And uh, I have a feeling that these two here are on the brink. If they're not there just yet, they're probably going to get there fairly soon uh, if we actually provide them with coal and, uh, and keep them running. And... The main reason for that is that as time has gone on, we're of course using more and more power, which means that these generators are running more of the time. They actually do cool down quite quickly. You'll see this one is down at 65 degrees Celsius compared to the 75 degrees because of the fact that it's not running all of the time. The same is true with our polymer presses over here. Of course, these are a bit of a different situation because they have the active cooling in the uh, in the hydrogen, but they do cool down quite quickly as soon as they uh, as soon as they stop working. You can see this one over here is closing in on 50 degrees Celsius, whereas this one that's turned off is currently down at below 20 and so the main way that we could probably mitigate this is by not using as much power but i think for now one of the easiest ways for us to resolve this problem without potentially moving this whole room over to here and trying to cool it down with this um anti-entropy thermal nullifier is probably just to replace the coal generators but this time make them out of gold amalgam that way we can increase their overheat temperature to 125 degrees celsius and at the very least kind of kick the can down the road a little bit until we've got uh, maybe a better solution in place and so i'm gonna go ahead and schedule that uh, so hopefully they'll come and dig that out i was thinking about spreading these out previously and i think i might do this now whilst we're at it so we'll do like this this and then if i move these machines down by one and maybe even get rid of the storage bin here because i don't really think that it's doing too much for us and whilst we're at it we could also go ahead and replace the hydrogen generator here with gold amalgam as well so we'll delete those we'll put in some statues down here i don't think it's going to do a huge amount we can even make it out of marble i guess real quick we've got this uh new marble unlock we'll make that out of granite oh it's too big it's too big i was hoping it would be smaller we could make one out of metal plus 20 plus 10 it does do a better job but it does also require the, uh, the refined metal that we don't really have too much of. You know what? I'll go for it. We're only going to put two of these down. Actually, no, never mind. They use 400 kilograms of refined metal. And so we're going to stick with the old favorite. And we're going to go with the large sculpting blocks there and there. And then we'll put down our coal generator, which I do want to make out of gold amalgam. And so for that, we are going to have to dig out a little bit more in the way of gold amalgam. And speaking of gold amalgam, the slime biome here is where most of our polluted water is. And I did notice that over the last couple of episodes, we have uh, very rapidly depleted our polluted water reserves, mostly due to the fact that we're using all of that polluted water to make oxygen over here in our electrolyzer. And so at some point, I do want to go ahead and uh, potentially dig down here and i'm thinking what i might do is try and merge all four of these bodies of water by just digging and having the water kind of flow down into this body and then have a pump in there that pumps that water up and over and either into here or i guess in our case it could just go directly into uh, the liquid reservoir either of those would work but that is something that i do want to bear in mind for now we do have a nice reserve of water we've got this reservoir here which is holding 5,000 kilograms of water for us to use so we do still have quite a nice backlog we don't need to worry about water just yet um but one thing we do have to worry about is power i think i'm going to go ahead and disable two of these polymer presses i know we just set these up in the last episode but you'll notice right now the power is kind of on and off and that is obviously doing part of the fact that we're currently uh, reworking our coal generators but even with the coal generators all running at max speed these guys sucking in an extra 720 watts it's 240 watts per polymer press is is insane right that's that's too many watts to focus on plastic right now so we'll turn two of those off we'll leave one of those on um also real quick i know i'm taking so many side tangents here but that does remind me that people did point out in the comment section i did the priorities wrong in the last episode i made it so that bert's highest priority was operating but what i meant to do was make all of his other priorities low and instead what i did is i made everybody else's operating priority low so that's not what i wanted to do uh, i want to change all of these back 
to medium because I do want other duplicates to operate other machines. What I don't want is Bert doing really anything other than operating our oil refinery. Of course, now we've turned off the polymer press, he doesn't need to be doing it all the time, but he will try and operate the oil refinery first, and then after he's done that, he'll go and do some other stuff with his time. This is looking much nicer. I'm very happy with the uh, the statues we've got going on here. So we'll throw down our coal generator like so, and then right next to it, we'll throw down the hydrogen generator like this. Must be built in unoccupied space. Mm, okay, so I think this is to do with the vent. I think if we get rid of the vent, this space will become unoccupied for us. That does mean we have to get rid of this carbon dioxide here. And I kind of feel like it would be best to put the carbon dioxide into this little pit down here. Unfortunately, it's quite hard for our duplicates to get down here. Every time we've done it thus far, we've always removed the insulated tile, had them climb down the ladder. And it's all been very, very temporary. I'm also thinking about setting up a closed loop water system down here. Right now, the water for this carbon skimmer comes all the way from over here. We've got the water sieve, which turns our polluted water into regular water, sends it all the way over, and then this turns the regular water into polluted water and sends it all the way back. And so to mitigate that amount of pipage, I'm thinking what we might do instead is just put down a water sieve over here and create a closed loop system because of the fact that the carbon skimmer doesn't actually use any water. It just turns regular water into polluted water. That will work just fine. It will drastically reduce the amount of, uh, the amount of pipes that we need in the base. So I think I might do that. As I mentioned, there is still not a really an easy way for them to get down here. They can do it through this door, but right now there's still only one Atmo suit dock. And so I'm, I'm taking such a uh, such a tangent here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and first of all specify in here that I would like my stone hatches to be fed some kind of food. In this case, we will go with. Are we are we out of food entirely for our, our hatches? What are these guys eating? These guys are eating igneous rock, and then you are currently not set to eat anything. It says zero kilograms here. I thought that might have been what we had, but I guess that's more likely um, what's in that uh, in that machine. So we'll go stone hatches and we will feed you igneous rock. And we'll do the same with our stone hatchlings as well. Igneous rock like so. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a wall over here, I think. It's gonna make the room very small. And that's almost certainly gonna affect the number of hatches that we can actually have in here. What I might do is push it back to here try and make the room as big as we possibly can and then we'll get rid of this we'll get rid of the ladders we will get rid of these and then we're gonna put down a few more atmo suit docks that does of course mean that we need a few more exo suits and so let's go ahead and schedule i'll say three for now we'll try and have like four docks here just to make it so that more people can get in to do things because right now if i schedule a task over here what happens is, you know, Hassan is in here grooming all of the Drekos, getting our plastic and, and getting us more Drekos, but it means that nobody can get down here to do any of the work, which is uh, really not ideal. So we'll try and get all of the hatches back in here. I'm also fairly certain that we can probably get rid of all of the regular hatches now. We do have quite a few uh, stone hatches around the base that we could move into here in place of the regular hatches, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's put down three more ammo suit docks as soon as we get enough, uh, enough material for it. There we go. Of course, we do need to hook all of those up with gas pipes, like so, I guess. We'll do it like that. It's a bit of a janky way of doing it because we're going to give more oxygen to this one first, but that's fine. Over time, they will all fill up nonetheless. And then power wire, of course, does need to go to all of these. That might start to overload our cable again. We'll keep an eye on it. I don't think they use power all the time. Otherwise, this system would uh, most certainly be overloaded. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and uh, deliver suits to all of these as soon as they are available. Uh, we do have... A few hatches in here. He's already cramped. That is because of the eggs. So we'll go ahead and sweep that up there. So getting back to where we were at, we were making power. Let's put down our hydrogen generator right about here. Let's reconnect that back up to the gas pipe like so. We'll get rid of that one like that. And then the real thing that we were working on was our natural gas geyser, which is getting closer and closer to erupting by the day. It is now only 17 cycles away from erupting. And as I started talking about at the start of the episode, before we went way down on a separate power tangent, we need to figure out how we're going to store all of the natural gas that comes out of the geyser. And there are realistically two ways that we can do this. We can either store it all in reservoirs, and I did that crunch the numbers, and over the 141 cycles, this will produce about nine tons of natural gas, 9,000 kilograms of natural gas. Now, if we have a natural gas generator running, we'll use about half of that. It'll use about five tons, 5,000 kilograms of natural gas. And so we need to effectively be able to store four tons of natural gas 
for 60 cycles between when this stops erupting and when it starts erupting again. And we can do that in one of two ways. We can either store it in 27 reservoirs, which is quite a lot of reservoirs. You know, we've got what, two, four, six, eight reservoirs up here. And so having 27 reservoirs storing natural gas is quite a lot. Alternatively, we could try and store it all in a room. Now, there are pros and cons to both of these. The gas reservoirs take up 15 tiles and they can hold 150 kilograms of gas. So they store about 10 kilograms of gas per tile, which is pretty good. But if we get the high pressurized air vent, which I believe is in here, yeah, the high pressure gas vent, we can have up to 20 kilograms of gas per tile. Now, the downside to this is that if we do it that way, we're going to have to pump the gas away from the natural gas geyser because the geyser, by the way, will only pump out natural gas if the air around it is below five kilograms of pressure. So this can't go over five kilograms. And so if you want to get to 20 kilograms of pressure, we're going to have to collect the natural gas with a pump, pump it into another room with the high pressure gas vent, and then from there, pump it out of the high pressure room into the natural gas geyser. Thus meaning that we need two pumps to make that happen. Alternatively, we can pump it into 27 reservoirs. That way we only need one pump, but it takes up double the amount of space because it's only 10 kilograms per tile as opposed to 20 kilograms per tile. And on top of that, it also uses quite a bit of metal. The reservoirs down here are made out of our metal ore, which notoriously we've kind of struggled with uh, in the past. But I think I'm going to go with that. I think I'm going to go with the reservoirs here just because of the fact that it uses less power. The, like, I think power is really our biggest source of pain right now. It's the thing we're struggling the most with. And so having more power available to us not having to have that second gas pump i think is going to be huge hopefully that made sense i rambled on a lot there and threw a lot of numbers out at you but essentially what i'm going to do is i'm going to go over here we're going to dig out quite a bit of space we're going to dig a room around this thing so we'll go and we'll set up like a little room like this let me see how big do i want this to be i think we'll go two out on each side and we'll do something like this it doesn't need to be a huge room the guys are only outputs um i think it's like 350 ish uh grams per second of natural gas and so one pump is going to be enough to take care of it and so if we do something like this and have a gas pump say down here in the bottom left hand corner because of course the natural gas does sink uh, then that should work out quite well for us the tricky part is going to be figuring out where in the world we put 27 reservoirs that's going to be the the tricky part of this whole operation let's also make sure that we do put a door in i always forget we'll do something like that and then for now we'll just go down with ladders we can always make this area uh, look a little bit nicer in the future but for the time being something like that should do the trick uh, did i make my hydrogen generator out of gold i bet i didn't right i didn't okay real quick delete that you fool the reason why we deleted it in the first place well we needed to move it anywhere but one of the reasons we deleted it in the first place was that i wanted to replace it with gold because this guy is also uh, getting dangerously close to that 75 degrees celsius these guys are now at 75 degrees celsius but thankfully are working a little bit nicer uh, we are getting close once again to being out of coal which is never good uh, we do have coal over here are our ammo suits here they're not that is because you do not have copper or iron okay so real quick i'm going to cancel the copper one and iron wise we're going to go over to our trusty metal refinery and schedule some iron or we do already have it scheduled we're just full up on liquids okay so i think it might be time to look at the possibility of moving our metal refinery over here somewhere and trying to cool down the water and then like circle it back to the refinery i think that is what i'm going to do i think again it's annoying because of the fact that i don't want our duplicates to have to be in an exosuit to get their jobs done and i guess technically we don't need to do that we could have our metal refinery kind of up here and then just pump the water away and back hmm how do i want to do this i guess we could try and bump the roof on this room and then have the liquid kind of go through here so maybe have the metal refinery here and then have the liquid kind of pump out go through here or kind of pop out this way go through here and then come back i think that makes a fair bit of sense and so you know what let's go for it i'm going to dig out i'm going to schedule the dig at least of this area over here i think they can get to this but without releasing that chlorine out into the world so we'll dig that out we'll let them do that and then we'll try and move our metal refinery 
over to this new area because it's clearly not working over here. It's too hot. It's uh, not breathable. So our duplicates can't stay for too long anyway. And on top of that, right now, we're just collecting water in these reservoirs, which of course is, uh, is not ideal. We really want to start pumping that water uh, background into the system and using it for our electrolyzers and whatnot. Um, I am going to set this stuff down here to a slightly higher priority. I know I'm starting like a ton of different things in, uh, in this episode, but I really want to get stuff like this taken care of because I want this to be ready to go by the time it actually uh, begins outputting its natural gas. So we will go ahead and dig all of this around it out. And as per usual, we are going to have to have a couple of ladders here to make sure our duplicates can actually get to all of that, uh, to all of that digging and to all of the tile making. Also, another thing that people pointed out to me in the comment section that I completely forgot about in the last episode is that the polymer presses do also output steam when they work. And because this room is quite hot, that steam is automatically being turned back into water. And so over time, we are going to slowly but surely get quite a large amount of water on the bottom floor of this room. And so one suggestion that I got in the comment section was to unlock the research for these guys right here, the valve miniaturization research, which unlocks the mini gas pump and the mini liquid pump, which draws in a small amount of liquid uh, to run it through pipes, must be submerged in liquid. And so if you put one of those, maybe like right here, we can make sure that we still have a thin layer of water underneath our polymer presses because this is doing a pretty good job at helping us keep the polymer press cool. But we can also go ahead and pump out any excess water if the levels start to get too high, because of course, if the levels do get too high, the polymer presses will stop working and the whole system becomes kind of useless. And so if we need 27 reservoirs, I think the easiest way for us to do that is going to either be to have nine rows of three reservoirs or to have three rows of nine reservoirs, right? Those are the easy ways to multiply two numbers together to get 27. And I think that having like nine rows of three is going to be a little bit easier, albeit still somewhat difficult because we have to go five blocks, because that's five, and then we'll go one, one, two, three, four, five, two, one, two, three, four, five, three. So that's 15 blocks there. That's gonna hold three reservoirs. We then have to have a new floor for every single one. So three, six, nine, 12, we can have right there. And then if we do the same on the other side, I guess it's a 24, which is really annoying because it means that we need one more line that's not gonna be, like it's not gonna be symmetrical. There's gonna be more on one side than the other. And I guess that's fine. We can just do it like this for now. And then we'll have the same thing kind of mirrored on the, on the opposite side here. Three, six, nine, 12, and 15, like so. And then you, and I think we can dig up this stuff here. Let me check real quick. It does give us the option to delete it, so I'm going to assume that we can. We might as well leave the tile there for the time being. Uh, actually, no, I'll replace it just because it's going to look a little bit nicer. And then, I think that's right. Yes, that should be enough space for 27 reservoirs to go down. And 27 reservoirs does require a lot of metal, but thankfully, I think we've actually got enough metal to make this happen. And I've put that down in the wrong place. This one is, uh, is overhanging, so... I will cancel both of those. Instead, we want it to look something like this. And then we want that copied 27 times, like so. I can't put these ones in yet because we don't actually have access uh, to that area. But this is kind of what I'm thinking. And so the idea here is that we're going to pump out of this guy. It's going to go around like so. My man here is trapped. I would like like a priority emergency on getting this guy out. If, uh, if that is doable. I do love how nonchalant they are about being trapped and, uh, and slowly dying. Thankfully, their, their, their friends here are on the way down to, uh, to save him. There we go. Beautiful. And they also got the wire done as well, which is nice. And so, as I was saying, gas pipe is going to come along, around, up. And I think the best way to do this is going to be to kind of daisy chain it through every single one of these. It's going to be a little bit tedious, but I think it's going to make the most sense. Something a little bit like this. Now, I know this looks pretty janky, but I'm pretty sure this will work. So the gas comes out here, over to here, and then it goes in, out, in, out, in, out, and it should go all the way through all of these, down to the bottom, and then all the way through all of these until eventually it ends up in this guy at the very end here, at which point we will then have another pipe coming out of there and then going up to wherever we decide to have our natural gas generator. I know it seems a little convoluted, but I think this is the best way to do this using the least amount of power. It does use a lot of raw resources, like just to build all of this stuff, but we save that extra wattage from running an extra pump or maybe other machines that we could need. And, you know, potentially even gas filters as well to get everything out that's not natural gas. And so I do think that this is probably the best way to do this. Let me know in the comment section if there is a better way, I'm sure there is. But uh, for now, I'm going to go with this and we're going to see if, uh, if we can get this to work. We are 12.6 cycles away from 
being able to uh, to actually utilize our geyser here. I would very much so appreciate it if we could get the um, the building here built. So I am going to build some more ladders here. Apparently, this one's not close enough to actually get to, uh, to this unreachable build. People did tell me, and I'm a, I'm a fool for not using it here, uh, that I should not be using sandstone for builds like this because the sandstone is uh, is all the way back like in our base. And so using something like sedimentary rock here might be better because it's close by. So if we go with sedimentary rock and then we do something like this, that way they don't have to go, you know, grab the sandstone and then run down here to deliver it. They can just grab the igneous rock that's already on the ground and then use that to build the tile that we scheduled here. So I think it's gonna make a lot more sense. I'm gonna hit Alt and Z so our duplicates can get to work on building all of this stuff here. Okay, so quite a few cycles later, we are now 35 seconds away from this thing uh, emitting its first spout of natural gas. That means I do need to reconnect this. And I also, um, ideally, at priority nine here, would like to delete a few of these pipes here so that the natural gas uh, does not find its way into. I'm actually gonna set this over here to like priority urgent. This one's already full, so it shouldn't matter. But if they could potentially empty this out, that would be grand. I have made a few changes, of course, to our area here that is brilliant fantastic and so uh, this guy any second now is going to actually go ahead and erupt with its first little bits of natural gas i have put down an atmos sensor here to only start pumping when this is above 500 grams and because of the fact that the natural gas sinks down um, the room should be fairly full of natural gas before it starts pumping away which is good and then of course it does even though it is now active You'll notice it's still not pumping anything out. That is because even when active, its eruption period is only for 362 seconds every 743 seconds. And so we might have to wait like an extra cycle here before this actually starts to pump anything out. But this, I think, is pretty much good to go. There is almost nothing left in here. There's like 20 grams of polluted oxygen left, um, which is almost nothing. Um, I've set up this little weird contraption here. I've seen this used a few times by some people. I'm not too sure how effective it is. The idea being that um, these doors, they're all hooked up with power. And when a duplicate runs through it, the idea is that any gas that tries to move from here into here is destroyed by these two middle doors as they close so fast. So the idea here is that this stops at least some of the polluted oxygen from moving in. In practice, I have seen that it's not 100% effective. Some, uh, some of the gas does still move through and get into this room. But I think for our purposes here, this should work out just fine. Uh, for now, at least ideally, once this is up and running, we just lock the doors and, uh, and leave it forever. But over here, we have our 27 gas reservoirs all up and running and ready to go all ready to accept uh, all four or five tons of natural gas that are going to come through there uh, over on this side i have begun preparations for a new natural gas generator of course our power room here was max size and so i did have to put it into uh, another room the combat here is just me killing uh, a hatch because these guys are overcrowded and so i'm hoping by killing one of those hatches there that they will no longer be overcrowded fantastic that does mean we can only hold three in this room which is not ideal um, and i guess in that scenario we probably want to put a stone hatch in here and get rid of the regular hatch but of course that is not my top priority for now for now i want to get back over to this so we're going to have one natural gas generator inside the power plant that is of course going to be able uh, to be tuned up and then one that is outside the plant and so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to have the one that's outside the plant be the one that receives natural gas as kind of like a secondary byproduct. This is where all the natural gas that comes from our fertilizer synthesizers and all the natural gas that comes from our oil refinery is going to go. And the one that's inside of the power plant, the one that's going to receive a constant supply of natural gas from our geyser down here is going to be the one that can be tuned up to make even more power. I did consider putting this somewhere else, but I figured at the end of the day, it just made sense to have the, uh, the natural gas generator right next to the other one. That way we don't have to have a second pump. We can, you know, use the same mesh tile. All this stuff here should just work out in the exact same way. We will get rid of these ladders and put another mesh tile here once this is done. I do wish to disconnect these pipes here. Now we could just set it up so that the natural gas goes to both generators, but I think at that point, we're not gonna have enough natural gas to run either generator all of the time. And as I mentioned previously, I would much rather have one generator running all of the time than have more power like half of the time, right? I really want that consistency in power that we've kind of had up until now with our coal. And so having one generator that we know is always going to be online and then a second generator that is online some of the time, I think is a good compromise here. Now, of course, we are generating a little bit more natural gas. Oh, look at that. Natural gas is, uh, is finally being made. It's finally being pumped. I love it. I'll speed things up a little bit here. There is a little bit of... Um, of polluted oxygen in there but that's fine uh, i am gonna go ahead and not allow people in here now because i don't really think there's any need for anyone to come into this room but 
Uh, my point was going to be that we're producing 104.24 grams per second of natural gas and a generator only uses 90 grams per second of natural gas. And so much like with our other setups, like a hydrogen setup and whatnot, we are going to end up in a situation where we have a little bit too much natural gas um, for this one natural gas generator. And so just like we've done before, we can set up a little gas bridge for the uh, input here and make sure that once this thing is backed up and has too much natural gas, we could maybe send a little bit over to here. It would be quite awkward to do because I think what we want is we want all of these to fill up and then the alternate pipe is going to be back here somewhere. And so we'd have to have a separate pipe going all the way up, but I think it might be worth it to make sure that we always have power. That's not a problem we've got to worry about just yet. For now, we've got a little while before that actually becomes a reality because we've got just so much time for uh, for all of this stuff to make its way through. We do, of course, have to set up the gas pipe. So we're going to go from here all the way up to the top. And it's at this point where I have to decide whether or not I want to hijack the pre-existing cable that we have here for our natural gas. And I think the answer is honestly no. But I don't know, though, because... This could make our lives a little easier. I'm trying to set it up in such a way. I guess we could just not use the second generator. That would not be using our geyser to its fullest extent, but I think would be the optimal way to do it. Because if I just hook up, you might be asking Isaac, why in the world not just hook this up like so and let it just go to both generators? The reason for that is that, as I mentioned before, I think it's going to, uh, there's not going to be enough natural gas to power both of them. And so I think for now, I'm going to delete like this pipe here and we'll see how it goes i'm gonna delete this pipe so this generator never comes online all of the natural gas is gonna go through this system here it's gonna go around and through over to here um, it doesn't need to go through a filter but i guess it can to get rid of some of that polluted uh, oxygen if it ends up making its way into there and uh, that does also mean that if our fertilizer synthesizers go down for whatever reason we still got natural gas for our food supplies which i guess is always good and so we'll do it this way for now if this becomes a problem in the future, uh, or if we find that we've just got a ton of excess natural gas, we could maybe turn uh, this guy on periodically. Uh, somebody is starving. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, someone in the comment section did point out that there's maybe a bug with... I think he's going to eat now, though, right? Maybe? Maybe? You're going to... Two people are starving. Why? Why are you Why are you starving? People did say there could be an issue. I'm going to schedule some downtime real quick. Uh, there could be an issue with the super speed mode and... People not, like, dupes not eating correctly. Food type not permitted. Do we have... Oh, excuse me? Hold on. We are out of... Oh, hold on. Irrigation. We are out of polluted water. I see. Oh, of course I'm a fool. Okay. Okay. I have made a mistake here. My mistake... Okay, real quick. Let's allow people to eat gristleberries. Because otherwise, uh, this is not... Everyone's going to starve. So it's not a problem with the super speed mode. Which is, is good news, I guess. We will... Go ahead and do something. Uh, I'll leave that on downtime for now so they can actually go ahead and eat. These guys are almost at work time anyway, so we'll switch that over. Uh, but I think, I know the problem here is that what I've done is in order to keep our water supplies going, so in order to keep our oxygen generated, I took these reservoirs over here and I connected them up to the polluted water pipe so that the water in here would go around over and back into here. That means that we ended up with clean water in here. Now that's fine for our electrolyzer because it means the water goes through the sieve it doesn't need to be filtered it goes straight through into here and then gets sent to the electrolyzer that is all fine but it means that regular water has been sent up to our pincher peppers and they do not work with regular water they need polluted water uh, to grow and thus they are not growing right now and that is a problem so i'm thinking what might be a better solution here is to probably have Instead of all of our polluted water going down into this like uh, little pit here, instead, if we just have all of our polluted water going into a reservoir for now, right about here, and then if we input like, do I want to do it like that? Yeah, we'll input like that, and then we'll output like this, and then we'll delete these pipes here, priority eight. We'll delete these pipes and also these pipes so that the polluted water gets stored in here and then gets sent up here. That does mean that we are going to run into the issue here with not having enough water for our liquid reservoir, but we can solve that hopefully in the next episode by going and grabbing some of this water from down here. And also we are going to get more polluted water from our uh, natural gas generator. Now, another thing that I did in the cutaway here is I built my second metal refinery and I also bumped up the roof on our cooling room over here, which is nice and cold now. So hopefully my plan here is to have water come in to this guy. And I think for now we can just do something like this. 
I believe, again, this is a closed loop system. I don't think it uses any water. Let me check that though real quick in the, uh, the good old database here. It's isn't, I don't think. I think the water is just for cooling purposes. And so I'm fairly certain that once we get a little bit of water into here, we can then just uh, shut it off and everything will be good. So my thought is we go out through here and then we don't have a, um, and then we don't have a radiant liquid pipe. Is that something that we can research and I've just not unlocked yet? Or is that just something that, oh no, it is. We've just not unlocked it. Okay, I think for now, we'll go with the regular liquid pipe and we'll just do something like this and then have it come back up and in like that. And hopefully that'll be enough to cool it down. If it's not in the future, we can replace some of this with the radiant liquid pipe once we unlock it via the research. And hopefully uh, that will be good enough. Uh, it doesn't need to be priority nine, but we'll leave it like that for now. So our duplicates can go and get that, uh, that taken care of. The schedule is back to being normal, which is good. The pipe from down here. Oh my goodness, there's so much water. Uh, is the pipe from down here set up? Did they build that? They did. So that is now hooked up. And so I think... That should be working. The natural gas is making its way through. I'm going to Alt-Z and hopefully watch our natural gas make its way around here. Oh, I have not done this correctly. Uh, you need to be deleted. Uh, we'll do that like priority nine. And then I need to connect up the right pipe, which is this one. So here and here. Those are already set to priority nine, so that should get done any second now. And then finally, uh, the backup of natural gas that we have in here will begin making its way. There we go. Right around. That polluted oxygen should get filtered out right about here and then everything else should make its way over and into our natural gas generator that does remind me i do have to put down a pipe like so to actually get the natural gas in there but i think other than that everything is looking pretty much a-okay these are unreachable builds and that does make some sense i think for now i'll go ahead and i'll dig here and we'll have a ladder going down as opposed to having a ladder uh, that goes up I don't even know. I think we do need a ladder. So I'll do something like that and I'll schedule these to be like priority eight digs. There we go. Look at all of that natural gas coming in here. The generator is being tuned up right now. It's producing 800 watts. I'm interested to see what it produces uh, when it's tuned up. These guys produce an extra 50%, right? So I would assume like 1.2 kilowatts out of this guy. That would be pretty crazy. Although they never get to like Mimo is doing this here, but she never gets to the end of this. I hope that it like saves its progress. If not, we might have to look into putting oxygen into this room. Like, if the progress is not saved there, they don't have enough time without oxygen. Oh, it does save its progress. Okay, that's good. This guy is now producing 1.2 kilowatts. That is fantastic. And so we should be able to expect the same from our generator here. And so once both of these are online, we can produce about 2.4 uh, kilowatts worth of power, not including uh, the coal power here, which I think is going to be pretty useful for us going forward and should hopefully allow us to keep some of our machines online without having to, uh, to kind of scavenge for little bits of coal every now and again. We managed to get all the way up to 6.3 tons of plastic now, which is also fantastic. Uh, we do need to move our pump over i assume that we are now out of oil yes so we're no longer using the polymer press or the oil refinery which is again probably why we're actually doing quite well on, uh, on power right now because those are some pretty big power drains but i think the first thing that i will do is i'll treat my duplicates to a little creature comfort in the form of a nicer bed now that does mean that we are going to have to get rid of the plant pots here because this thing does take up a fair bit of space but you know what i think that's fine we could potentially put a second painting in everybody's room i think that would probably provide the same amount of decor and uh, a morale boost as the plant does the plant the plant actually it says zero right there or plus 25 and then the painting here is plus 13 so yeah actually an extra painting will do a little bit more than the plant would of course we could have had the extra painting in there with the plant but i think our duplicates are going to be a little bit more happy with these ultra comfy plastic beds that look like they're from the future more than anything else that does remind me uh, my eventual goal with this was not to have them come in like this because of course when they do uh, some of the hydrogen can leak out and eventually the room just becomes worse at doing its job of trying to cool everything down i'm gonna set this to priority nine because i would love them to uh, to get this taken care of uh, oh they can't get into here you fool and also you've released the chlorine anyway so at this point you might as well just dig gosh dang it i don't <laughs> i don't know how i managed that but we might as well at this point go ahead and, uh, and dig that out that's fine the chlorine is going to sink down into here and it's a part of the base but we're not really spending uh, too much time in all things considered although it might make it harder for a duplicate to run this uh, metal refinery continually but uh, as i was saying the hydrogen leaks out and it just becomes less good at, at conducting heat and so i really wanted this to be closed off and to have a sweeper an auto sweeper collect all of the plastic and send it out of course that's more power. For now, we don't really have the power for that, but eventually that is the long-term goal of this setup over here. So really now, power seems like it might be okay. 
I think we've got enough hydrogen, like statistically, looking at the numbers, we should be generating enough hydrogen to keep the generator on all the time. We, we crunched the numbers before. I believe it produces 112 grams per second of hydrogen. This guy up here uses 10 grams per second. And this guy over here uses, I think it's 90. So we should have an excess of hydrogen, enough to make sure this thing is always online. You can see now it is full. And so I'm hoping that these two generators running all of the time, or almost all of the time, will be enough to keep our base going for the time being. And next episode, we'll come back. I think we'll start maybe digging up this way. I do want to block this off and make this section of the base only accessible through the Atmosuit dock, because that's going to allow us to do a lot more, you know, digging and exploring and not having to worry about chlorine or hydrogen or anything like that for the time being. And so I'm thinking of digging out in this direction. Uh, you know, we've already got kind of a bit of space here, uh, digging out really just in all directions, trying to find more geysers. If we could find another natural gas geyser, that would be great. Um, although I'm fairly certain there's only one per map. If we could find a steam geyser, that would be fantastic. That would hopefully get rid of uh, some of our water was here and make life a little bit easier in that regard. We do need to empty out some of these pipes here, specifically the ones that contain regular water, not polluted water. And I have a feeling that as soon as I enter that out, it's going to move up and it's going to mess up my whole floor here. But I'll do something like this and hope that somebody goes and, and empties those pipes out. These beds are looking fantastic. I'm very happy with those. I will go ahead and schedule some more canvases. We might as well have two in each room now. I don't really see any reason not to. There we go. Beautiful. Look how much more comfortable they look. They've been in those cots since the very beginning of the colony. And now they're looking so much more comfortable than they did originally. That is fantastic. Is this up here done? It is not. Can we get... Oh, they can't get here, can they? Because they can't... They can't climb up there. Okay, my bad. Once again, let us... How can I get them over there in an easy way? I don't know if there's really an easy way to get them over there, honestly. But outside of just digging up like this and then digging across and just having like a tile here, here and here. It looks like they are doing a pretty good job here, actually. Although, no. So, okay, see, I don't want you to do that. I guess... Okay, I guess what we do in that case then, because it looks what they're doing is they're just constantly deleting the same bit of water over and over again. So I guess what we'll do is we will delete, well, empty out, I should say, this pipe here, because I assume there is polluted water or regular water in here. And so if we schedule this, like priority nine, hopefully they'll come, they'll empty that out, and then we'll let that run until all of the regular water here is gone. I don't see any regular water here, but it does say growth halted irrigation. I'm hoping we don't have to, like, empty out and then replant this plant or anything like that. Contains polluted water, contains regular water, polluted water, regular water. So yeah, it does say that it contains that. I don't know if we can empty out what's in the pipe there. It looks like we can, as shown by the fact that he is doing it here. I will also schedule it for this plant as well, because it looks like that one is also containing. And you know, I'll do it for all of these real quick. And by that, I mean, of course, I'll do it for just the end one, because it makes no sense to do it for the rest of them. If we do it for that, the water's going to move over. And then ideally, it looks now we can cancel it. And hopefully that's good. This does still have... Oh, no, it says polluted water on all of these now. So hopefully this is good. I think I might uproot these real quick and replant them and hope that that, that works. Okay, so it seems that uprooting them and replanting them has worked. This is good. There is always the problem that this doesn't work. Like, eventually this might uh, fill up with polluted oxygen. And so I guess real quick, one of the last things that I will do here is put down a bridge... Much like what we've done with the gases here, if we get rid of like these three pipes here and we put a liquid bridge there and then have, yes, there we go. And then have the outflow pipe here as kind of like a backup. That way we can always make sure that our pincher peppers, which are kind of core to our colony survival, they will always have food. So we'll always try and go up through here first. And if it can't, it will go this way and get dumped out over here. And that is going to reduce the amount of water that ends up over here. But it also does make sure that we always, always, always have polluted water for our pincher peppers, which I think is probably one of the most important things for our base right now. This finally is up and running. Let's see if we've got water in there. I think we do. It does say that water is in there ready to go. So let's schedule like 10 iron here we'll set that to like priority eight and so hopefully any second now a duplicate will come over and begin work on producing the metal as soon as they touch it the power dies oh it's because it uses so much power of course okay that is our problem as soon as they hit it oh of course that's why we built it over here oh of course okay so we built it over here because we could hook it up directly to our heavy watt wire the instant they try and use it over here it's it's overloading the 1000 watts the wire can handle it needs 1200 and so i'll come back to this in the next episode we'll figure out a way to uh to mitigate that and uh, we might end up running another 2000 watt 
of uh, conductive wire over. We might even just run some heavy watt wire all the way across the base, although that would be pretty bad for decor. Uh, but for now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's episode of Oxygen Not Included there. We're closing in very quickly on cycle 300. We've now got a ton of of gas reservoirs over here slowly but surely filling up with a bunch of natural gas we've got some free renewable power in the form of that natural gas and next time we'll come back we will look at uh, getting some of this water into our system over here so we can keep going with our oxygen and our hydrogen and we'll also look into maybe finding some more geysers specifically we're looking for those steam geysers so that we can get some more water uh, and potentially even make power out of that steam as well but for now, guys, as always, if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more oxygen not included, be sure to go ahead and hit that like button. It really does help out a lot. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you're new here to get notified as soon as new videos go out. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.